what well, what is gauntlet which you you have already answered thank you and so w- what is era also because gauntlet and just you know to be clear because i feel like in in these days we have to be very clear about what is a centralized organization what is a decentralized protocol gauntlet being a centralized company and era being a decentralized on-chain protocol correct yes so gauntlet the company is a service provider to dow so we 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 go to DAOs. We say, "Hey, uh, we will monitor your protocol, send governance proposals. You know, we've sent the most governance proposals. I think like over eighty percent in Compound and Aave. Um, and we will, whenever there's something that goes wrong, you know, we're constantly running these simulations off chain. And then anytime something goes wrong, we like submit a governance proposal, and then you have dashboards to see why that decision, why we're choosing those parameters, so that people who are involved in this." Even if they don't totally understand or they're not like constantly monitoring the protocol, they can have an understanding of what they're voting on when they're voting on changing things in these in DeFi protocols. Uh, and but we are a centralized company. And one of the problems we encountered was we were like thinking about, okay, how does someone like Ave increase the amount that they can lend safely? And so in normal finance, the way you do that is you have an insurance fund, uh, and Ave does have an insurance fund. The safety module. However, the Aave insurance fund is mainly cons- consists of Aave token. It doesn't really consist of the assets that are being borrowed. So, if there's sort of a crisis, sort of like the one we saw last week, the assets in the insurance fund are going to be going down at the same time that every all the defaults are happening. And you have to sort of have this ability to match assets and liabilities. And so. While we were analyzing, you know, while we do these kind of very fine grained analyses of protocols, we realized that if the treasuries of these DeFi protocols were managed um, more actively, where the the treasury matches how people are using the protocol, like if 80% of the loans are in USDC, then the treasury should have, say, 30% of its assets in USDC in case those go under and you have to pay back lenders. Um, and, and you and you will have more. Uh, you know, less conservative risk parameters, uh, and so the idea is that that was what made 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 us start thinking about like how do you think about treasury management for DAOs, right? I think you know there's a lot of holistic type of stuff that there's a lot of people who are sort of holistically analyzing this, being like, okay, we should spend ten percent of the DAOs um, uh, treasury on grants and twenty percent on security audits and thirty percent on liquidity mining and. Twenty percent on marketing, if if there is such such a thing, and in budget depending on the DAO, and those are not the things I think that Era is really focused on. Era is focused on things where there's a quantitative uh, sort of objective for a DAO. So in the case of a lending protocol, it might be: Do my assets cover my liabilities? You know, like obviously we've seen a lot of stuff with whether it's with FTX or whether it's with centralized lenders where they, their assets didn't cover their liabilities. And DeFi, because at, at real DeFi, you know, like the, the stuff that's existed for a while, not, not sort of the, the, the Luna type of stuff, um, and, and has survived for a while, uh, has generically been quite conservative with how, how lending works, which is, which is a good thing, right? I mean, that inevitably. But in order to kind of get off-chain finance and on-chain finance to like be anywhere close to each other, you have to be able to sort of actively manage these insurance or treasury funds. And so our initial version is really focused on managing insurance and treasury funds so that you know when there is something like the last week, you can actually cover you know the lenders and make them whole. Um, but the long-term architecture of era, is such that any quantitative thing that you can say about a DAO on chain, if you want to make that your objective, your KPI, your North Star, ERA can basically incentivize people to op- to make portfolios that optimize your treasury to optimize your objective. So another objective might be, hey, we want to have at least five years of runway. We also want to make sure that we own the DAO owns at least. Twenty percent of its governance token, and we also want to make sure the DAO um, doesn't incur transaction costs more than five percent, right? So those, that's that's a KPI, right? That's like a thing the uh, members of a DAO could agree on. They vote on that, 
And you can turn that into an on-chain objective function, so something that you know, can be measured on-chain. And, and the key thing is it being on-chain. Because if it's off-chain, then you have to trust the off-chain provider. But when there's an on-chain measurable thing. And then ERA makes a game where people compete to, 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 to give portfolios, like how the DAO should spend its treasury, that maximize that. So, you know, maybe you give a portfolio that says the DAO should be 80% governance token, 10% USD, and 10% Matic. And when you submit that, and someone else says that it should be 50% Matic, 30% governance token, 20% uh, stablecoin. And so you could think of ERA as saying, okay, I'm going to take both your portfolios, I'm going to make an aggregated portfolio, which might be like, you know, 40% Matic, 40% governance token, 20% stablecoins, and it trades into, and then it makes, it trades into that portfolio. And then, you know, it stays in that portfolio for some amount of time, like say a week. And then the people who submitted these portfolios are graded on how well they optimize the objective. So maybe the person who said, you know, really high Matic percentage was actually correct because the DAO's governance token went down a lot over Matic, and so they get rewarded more. And the person who says, who chooses sort of like a portfolio that does less, they get rewarded less or even slashed if it causes a loss. Um, so does that kind of make sense? Yeah, no, absolutely it does. And and just for clarity, um, when you're talking about the the DAO treasury or the protocol treasury, this is revenue that has been generated by the protocol, which is then sent to a treasury that is governed by the token holders and not at all the funds that are deposited into the protocol by users. Correct. Correct. So, so, so actually a DAO's treasury is usually when you create the DAO, some fraction of the DAO's Governance token actually sit in the treasury to be spent over time, and then also fees. But this is not user funds whatsoever. This is this is pure. And the beauty of DeFi versus sort of something like what we saw with FTX is that there is a clear segregation of these funds on chain, and that that's the the beauty of like being on chain as a DeFi protocol. You always have proof of reserves, and you always have proof of liabilities. You can always see both of them, and there's no way of anyone kind of manipulating those. And moreover, you also have separation of DAO treasury-owned funds by the token holders and user funds owned by the users, and the users can withdraw whenever they want. Right? That's that's paramount. And you know, in the normal in a normal bank in a normal uh, capital structure, it's always sort of like debt holders first, then equity holders, then maybe customers, right? And DeFi flips this on its head because it's customers first, then token holders. And, you know, right now there's no debt holders because there's no debt in DeFi, but maybe, maybe there will be one day, right?